Hello everyone, we are in our third week of the series on irony and uh, today's talk is called Catch of the Day. We're going to be in John chapter 21 if you want to turn there. I'm actually going to aim to be as quick as possible. I know so many of us are so overwhelmed with how many videos there are, um, how much stuff is online and uh, our attention spans are getting worse. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. So I'm going to be as concise as possible, as short as possible. So this video isn't another thing, but it's enjoyable. It's something to chew on, something for us to just go into the new week and for us to discuss in our life groups um, and our small groups during the week. So John chapter 20, 21, and we are going to be talking about the catch of the day under the heading irony. We know that irony is not the same as sarcasm. Sarcasm is intended to bite, intended to possibly hurt. Irony points out something that was already there. Um, in fact, Jesus uses verbal irony for us to chew on what's going on and, and try and like mull over what he has said. But in this one, in this story today that we are discussing, we see just irony all over the place and we see how ironic it is that when we're not looking for Christ, we don't see him. Let me say it again. When we're not looking for Christ, we don't see him. All right, let that sink in. All right, John chapter 21. Jesus appears to seven disciples. He has been crucified. He has been resurrected. And now here we are. And the disciples are trying to just go about their lives. And some of them go back to the jobs that they had before Jesus came along. So there, of course, is Peter fishing. And so this is this is the setting of John chapter 21. And this is what it says. We're going to read up until verse 11. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of, the, of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast a net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. I'm just going to pause there. Jesus actually performed this miracle when he called some of the disciples as well early on. He said, cast a net on the other side of the boat. And there was so much fish that the net started to break. And then he says to Peter, I will make you fishers of men. He says to Peter and the men that were with him. So from verse 7. It says, that disciple whom Jesus loved, John, therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of that fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them. And so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. I think it's appropriate just to pause and very quickly pray that God would use his word to pierce our hearts. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've placed in our lives. 
Sometimes we are so ungrateful. Sometimes we just don't see how blessed we are by you. So please, Lord, help us to understand that. Help us to keep our eyes open. Help us to keep our eyes on you. And help us to understand what you've called us to. We thank you for this text. We thank you for these last couple of weeks as we've been looking at irony in, in Scripture. And we just ask, Lord God, that we wouldn't be um, taken about to and fro by this little bit and that little bit over there, but that we would see the big picture, that we'd see the point. So, Father God, please direct us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right, so the first thing that I want to say to everyone today is that Jesus lets us wrestle with our own struggles. Jesus lets us wrestle with our own struggles. The fishermen were out on the lake all night and they caught nothing. Right? Absolutely nothing. Jesus had been on the shore, who knows, who knows how long he had been on the shore, but it was only in the morning that he came and he said, do you have any fish? And they say no. And it's there, after an entire night of struggling, that Jesus gives input. Some of us really struggle with the fact that God lets us wrestle with things in our lives. We really want God to come in and just fix everything, right? God, why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there so much sin? Why are we struggling like this? Why, 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 why? God, why? And we keep looking to God and saying, why, instead of looking to ourselves and saying, what are we supposed to learn from this? What's going on in my life right now that I'm struggling with, that I'm fighting against, that I'm seeing no fruit from? What am I supposed to learn? Jesus allows us to struggle with these things in our lives. It doesn't mean he's left us and it doesn't mean he's forsaken us. It just means he's letting us fight through it. And we know that there's every single step of the way we need to call on him. And he's there. He's already there. He's with us and he's guiding us. But he lets us wrestle with what's going on in our lives as well. It's at this point maybe when you're, when you're in your small group um, or even just where you are right now is Think of some of the things in the passage that jumped out at you. Something that jumped out at me when I was reading this in preparation was how specific they were about how many fish were in the catch and how the nets were not breaking. Another question to ask is, what do you find ironic about how these fishermen actually ended up catching the fish? It's not like they moved to a different part of the lake. <laughs> And it's not like they tried a different method. They literally just threw the net on the other side of the boat. Right? Why do you think the disciples didn't know that it was Jesus right away? I referenced that in the intro. That when we're not looking for him, we don't find him. There's a danger to not seeing Christ in all aspects of my life. There's also a danger of over-spiritualizing everything, right? So God is at work. God is working personally in your life in very personal ways. The second thing I want to say to you guys today is that Jesus can and will reveal himself in ways that we will not expect, right? Just take the, the, the passage of scripture that we read today. Jesus revealed himself to the disciples after being crucified and being resurrected on the shore of a lake. The disciples are out there fishing. Um, they are trying to actually just earn a living. This is how they earned their living. Some of them were fishermen. They have failed and Jesus is on the shore asking if they've got any fish, and they hear him, they see him, and they don't recognize it's him. We, the Bible doesn't say that he masked what he looked like. They were just not looking for him. And sometimes we are so blind to what God is doing in our lives because we're so distracted by ourselves or we're so distracted by what he, we think God is saying 
that we tend to neglect what God is really saying in our lives. God does things in unexpected ways all the time. What is he trying to say to you today through his word, through your time in prayer? What is God saying to you right now? Is that something that you're open to? Is God calling you to something and it's terrifying? It's overwhelming. It's sometimes frustrating because you don't completely see the big picture, but you know that God has called you. What is God saying to you right now? How has he called you unexpectedly in the past couple of weeks? Here's a couple of questions for you to ponder. If God is all-knowing and Jesus is God, why do you think Jesus asked the fisherman, do you have any fish? The second question I want to ask about this specific point is something that you guys can discuss in your small groups, is what is the most surprising way that Jesus has revealed himself to you in your life and in your walk with him? What is the most surprising way that Jesus has revealed himself to you or revealed his will in your life to you? Something to share with your group. Again, if you're not in a group, please let us know and we will plug you in so that you can connect with people during the week. Just contact us, please. We would love to get you connected. The third thing I want to speak about today is when we fully rely on Christ, he may bless us in surprising ways. When we fully rely on Christ, he may bless us in surprising ways. The word may bless us is very important because if we are following Christ for a blessing, the motive in our heart and our head is wrong from the get go. If we're following Christ to be blessed, we have got the wrong motive. If we become a Christian to just go to heaven, we have the wrong motive. The blessing that comes from God may be something in your life. And it may not be. This does not mean that God is not with you. This does not mean that God doesn't love you. What it means is that a relationship with Jesus is paramount. It is the most important thing for us to aim for. It is not about the blessing. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the things that we get from God. If this is what our life with Jesus is all about, we have the incorrect motive. But when we fully rely on Christ, we start to live this life that just honors God, honors the creator of all things. When we fully rely on Christ, we start to see this big picture of what's going on. And that in and of itself is such an incredible blessing. But if we're trying to rely on Christ so that we get X, Y, and Z, I've been using those letters a lot. If we rely on Christ just for that, then we've gone into this under, with a false understanding of how God works and how we're supposed to relate to him. It's something to ponder. Am I in this for the blessing? Am I in this for the stuff? Am I in this for the acknowledgement from other people? Acknowledgement from God? Acknowledgement wherever I am? Am I in this to look good or am I in this because I have this relationship with God that cannot be broken because of him? Not because of me, but because of him. Something for us to ponder. Here's a question for this point. I mean, the blessing the disciples had in, the, in this bit of scripture in John chapter 21 is that they, fi they finally caught some fish. <laughs> 153 large fish that they could sell on. They could have money coming in for their families. There was a blessing there. But the question is, if you were one of those disciples sitting on the beach... What would you have asked Jesus? What would you have asked Jesus? 
what would you have wanted to discuss with him? As we've go, been going through these three weeks of irony and, and actually just struggling a little bit, I think it's good for us to struggle and fight and wrestle with some scripture. Like last week, um, Zara told us to hate our parents as much as we love Jesus. You know, it, it looks like we hate our parents because we love God so much. And it's just, it's stuff that we need to really wrestle with in order for us to actually be believers in this world. It's important for us to do that. It's important for us to understand what scripture is telling us. It's important for us to understand what the church is all about. It's important for us to understand what it means to have a personal relationship with God. It's important for us to understand what the gospel is. That's fundamental, but it doesn't mean we move on from it. The gospel needs to permeate our lives. It needs to change who we are. It needs to direct us completely, not just as an entry into the Christian life. The gospel is everything, but not everything is the gospel. <laughs> There's another form of irony. The gospel for us is everything, but not everything is the gospel. So we need to really fundamentally understand Jesus and what he's called us to. I hope that you've enjoyed this series. I'm excited for next week as we celebrate Father's Day and we have a family service. I think it's going to be a good time. And uh, yeah, if you're not in a small group, please let us know. We will plug you in. We will sort that out. And if you are in a small group, take those questions, answer them, ask questions of your own and answer them as well. And stay close to Jesus. Stay as close as you possibly can, because this is what we're called to. And the closer we are to him, the easier it is for us to understand what he's called us to. And the easier it is for us to understand that we might not receive a blessing in terms of material goods, but we have a relationship with him. And that's more than we could ever fathom in a lifetime. Bye. Thank <music> you.